Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 25th August 2022. So let's get started with our quote. So today our quote it is regarding global warming. Yes, global warming is one of the important challenges that we are facing now. It is due to climate change. As you all know about what are the impacts of climate change, correct? So there is a high possibility of getting question regarding this global warming in your GS paper 3 and also you can get essay regarding this topic in your GS paper uh, 1. Okay, that is paper 1 you will be getting essay also from this area. So here you have to be prepared with the quotes. So here Kofi Annan says that global warming must be seen as economic and security threat. Because of this global warming, that is environment, it is compromising, right? So we are compromising our environment. So here, because of this depletion of our environment, yes, we will be having some negative impacts on economy and as well as it is also security threat, especially food security. So this is the uh, quote that you can use in your GS paper 3 directly. So now, let us try to see first topic. So this topic and this editorial that you can see on the screen, so this editorial, it is about one important topic regarding regarding linking of other so other linking other linking with our water id so this article is about other linking to our water id so all, as you all know what is other card so you will be having this other card so in this card you will be having a unique 12 digit number and this Aadhaar card that can be used for your PAN card application and even for everything nowadays Aadhaar is asked even to get a mobile SIM card you have to give your Aadhaar card. So why it is a cause of concern now? So if you see in this Aadhaar card they will be collecting your details personal information and also collecting your biometrics for example your fingerprints of your 10 fingers and even your iris scan. So as you all know that fingerprints are unique so we can't match there will be no match with one finger one person fingerprints with another person that is a unique thing. So it is a one of the important characteristic that helps to identify so and so person and this is the information that already taken in this Aadhaar card right. So if you are giving your Aadhaar card number or if you are linking this Aadhaar card with the voter ID yes there will be some cause of concern regarding right to privacy. As you all know, according to this KS Putuswami case, so right to privacy is a fundamental right under Article 21 of Indian Constitution. So regarding this right to privacy, in 2016 and 2018 prelims, you got question in your prelims. So in this way, you can also connect this topic with your prelims syllabus also. So now let us try to understand this topic. Already I explained you the brief background. So why now this Aadhaar card is to be linked with this voter ID? So two important things I want to share here is especially in rural areas we can see migration, rural to urban migration. So people they will be moving from one place to another place in search of works. Especially if you are talking about agricultural laborers, they are having just work for three to four months in a year and the rest of the time in that so and so year they have to search for other alternate jobs. So nowadays there is a trend of rural to urban migration which had been increased because in urban areas so these people they can, get, uh, they can get some unskilled labor work for example in construction site okay. So because of this if they are coming to the urban areas yes they will be getting work daily so that there will be livelihood opportunities for these people in this urban areas and if you are talking about migration you can also add about what are the pull factors what are the push factors. So that is your homework. So please let me know what are the pull factors and the push factors for this migration and this might be also a prelims question and even you can add this pull factors and push factors in your mains answer also. So please let me know about this pull factors and push factors in the comment box. So now let us try to see what is article try to say and let us focus on this article now. I discussed about the brief background. And if you see one more important problem here is if the people they are migrating from one area to another area so they will be also enrolling for their voter ID in that area also. So here we can see duplication of uh, voter cards and even one more problem here is bogus, ocean, uh, bogus voter IDs are also highly prevalent. So because why? Why we can see there are duplication of voter IDs and as well as bogus cards in India. 
So if you are talking about the registration process for this voter ID, it is a very, very easy process. Okay, so because of this, yes, there is a chance of duplication of this voter IDs and as well as the bogus cards. To eliminate the duplication and the bogus cards, now here, especially uh, some booth officers, they are saying that you have to link your Aadhaar card with the voter ID to reduce this duplication and as well as bogus cards. So this is some background. So if you are talking about our Indian democracy, so one of the clear success of our Indian democracy is because of especially elections. Yes, in India we have regular elections. In India, government of India conducting this regular elections and we can also see one more advantage of India here is there is a higher participation of electors when we are comparing with the other countries. When we are comparing with other countries, yes, you know that India is the second most populous country in the world. And conducting of election, it is a hefty task, but even though it is one of the success in our Indian democracy and there is a higher participation of electors. So besides the fact that there is a process of uh, this election is a very really simple in India because we are just using electronic voting machines that is EVMs are used along with this VV pads. And even if you are talking about the registration drives, they are mainly conducted by this election commission of India regularly, that is periodically. And as you know that India is the most populous country. So here the death rates are also there and the new people they are the birth rate is also high compared to that of other countries. So what happened here, one important issue which mainly faced by this election commission of India here is issuing of uh, or cleaning up of electoral rolls because there are some problems regarding this migrant people. Okay, so migrant population, they are increasing in the urban areas and we are also seeing there is a demographic changes because of entry of new eligible voters into the society. Okay, and we are also following this universal adult franchise. That is nothing but once you are getting 18 years of age, yes, you can have the voting right. Okay, so this is the universal adult franchise. So here we adopted that since, uh, since we got independence. Right. So here, if you are talking about the elections, so we are going for repeated cycle of elections. Okay. And in this way here, voters are allowed to register based on the proof of their age. Okay. So here, only if you are getting 18 years of age, yes, you can get the voter ID. So for that, you have to submit just your age proof and current place of residence. That's it. So it is as simple as that. So if you are talking about linking of Aadhaar with this voter ID, so it is a, it is not a voluntary action now according to the recent report because there are number of booth level officers you are saying that this voter ID will be cancelled, your voter ID will be cancelled if you are not linking with your Aadhaar number. So because of this, this is in news. So as if you are talking about some provisions regarding the linking of this voter uh, ID with your Aadhaar card, yes there are some provisions. For example, you can talk about section 6b of elect, uh, elector voters okay so here according to this form 6b okay it is not section b it is a form 6, uh, 6b of election rules 1960 which says that linking of your aadhar card with, with this voter id is voluntary and recently in 2021 we also came up with one bill that is election laws amendment bill 2021 it also says that linking of your electoral data with your aadhar number okay it is voluntary and if you're talking about what are the new changes that mainly came up so recently ministry of law and justice okay recently ministry of law and justice they amended this form b and introduced this form 6b and it said that so it this form especially makes it compulsorily for who have other they have to provide their other numbers in order to vote and now let us try to see what are the pros and what are the cons of linking this Aadhaar card with your voter ID. So this part will be important from your means. So you have to think, okay. So what will be the pros or what is the need? So first one here is, yes, we have a problem of migrated voters. Because of this, we have a problem of duplication of voter IDs. So to reduce this duplication of voter IDs, yes, we need to link this Aadhaar card. Because it is having information, so one ID will be given for single person, so there will be no matching of this ID, voter I, uh, sorry, other card ID with the other member, right? And this one here is, yes, there are 
some issues regarding the multiple enrollment so if you are going to any rural area so he will be having two voter ids for sure at least 30% of the villagers they have in the two voter ids so especially to decrease the menace of this multiple enrollment of the same person in the different places yes we have to link this aadhar card with our voter id and it will be also help to clean up voter elector rules also and to facilitate the electoral registration the location okay next one here is government is attempting to stop bogus voting to stop this bogus voting also yes we have to link aadhar card with our voter id okay so these are some pros of why why we need to link this and if you are talking about criticism so as you all know this aadhar card which is having our biometric information so because of this the right to privacy concerns that will come into picture as you all know this ks puttaswamy case of 2017 so in this case supreme court said that right to privacy is a fundamental right which comes in the article 21 of our indian constitution so it is also one important thing and next one here is so whenever there is a linkage of this voter id with this aadhar card it would help to create voter profiles so whenever we are creating voter profiles that will be having some influence in the voting process so that we can't ensure free and fair elections this is the one more issue and next one here is so whenever there is linking of this voter id with our aadhar card that will influence the fundamental rights of the citizen as you all know article 21 is a fundamental right and one more important issue here is yes you have the aadhar card so aadhar card it is not like it is a granting of citizenship correct so aadhar card is meant for the residents of india so one question which arises here is who are the residents of the india whether they are all indians or even foreigners so even some foreigners they will be having is residing in the india and they will be also getting this aadhar card so by linking this aadhar with our electoral process so we are putting or we are potentially providing voting rights for this non citizens also so these are the criticisms okay so this is about this topic in detail and what is the way forward so the way forward given in this article here is eci that is election commission of india should limit itself to utilizing existing proofs for voter authentication and even aadhar card declaration should remain voluntary but not compulsory so is it clear so far are you following yes now let us move on to next topic so this topic that you can see on the screen it is about g20 so here you have to know about what is this g20 first of all and you have to know what are the countries which are part of this g20 and apart from this you have to know why this g20 is in news so what is the relationship with this g20 and india in the coming years and you have to know about what are the india's plans regarding this g20 so you have to know or buy had the countries for sure so now let us try to discuss this topic and this topic is important from your gs paper to under international relations so now let us try to see why it is in news first of all before seeing the facts of g20 then you will be getting idea like oh ho oh, so because of this only this is in news so india will hold this g20 presidency that is from 1st december 2022 to 30th november 2023 so for one year india going to hold g20 presidency so because of this i can say india has a great role india can play a great role for the next one year as president of this g20 correct so in this context yes we have to plan ourselves ahead of attaining this presidency such that what are the plans we have so we can implement them without any delay correct so if you are talking about this g20 there are 20 countries that is i can say 19 countries plus european union so here you have to know this g7 countries yes you know about this g7 countries right so for example we have germany uk france canada us italy and japan so these are g7 countries and if you add russia to this g7 countries that will become this g8 countries so for this g8 countries we can add countries like for example turkey european union argentina brazil south korea mexico china indonesia saudi arabia australia india and africa 
So in all these countries, yes, we have to focus on some countries I will be listing out. So here we have Australia, here we have India, here we have South Africa, here we have China, here we have Brazil and here in the G7 countries we have USA, we have Japan. So if you pick out some countries here, let us try to see some countries which are which are grouping of uh, some informal groupings or some groupings. For example, you can talk about Quad. So which are the countries? Here we have US, Japan, India and Australia. So these are the countries which are part of Quad. Right? And if you are talking about some countries which are part of uh, BRICS, we have Brazil and we have Russia here. Okay? We have China, India and South Africa. So these are the countries which are part of BRICS. And, in, and one more country, one more group here is IPSA, that is India, South Africa, Brazil and Australia. So you can get that, so these countries that are part of this G20, they also having some individual groups. So in this way, whenever these countries are coming together and they are coming together on this platform, yes, there is a nothing, uh, we can say like, uh, which is something much that can be done, okay. As India is going to have this presidency, from this December, yes, we are going to have a lot of, we are going to play a lot of role, right? So now let us try to understand this topic. First of all, let us try to see what is this G20. So if you say this G20, it is an informal group of 19 countries and we have European Union which is part of that. That means I can say 19 countries plus 20th will be our European Union. And they are representatives of IMF, International Monetary Fund and as well as World Bank. So this IMF and World Bank, they are Britain who twins, correct? So this G20 members, why it is important? Because if you are talking about the population of this G20 as a whole, so it is mainly holding the world's largest advanced and emerging countries. For example, China is part, for example, India is part and US is part, Japan. So there are number of... Mm, countries that is developed countries and as well as emerging countries they are the part of this G20 grouping and they represents about two thirds of world's population okay so this G20 represents two thirds of world's population and 80 percentage of global investment and 75 percentage of this global trade so this data that you have to remember there is no choice I'm not going to give any choice here Yes, you have to buy this data of this G20 because this year and as well as next year, so this G20 is very important for your US prelims and as well as mains. So because of that, I am focusing that much on this topic. So please try to understand. So if you are talking about context, as I said, yes, India is going to hold G20 presidency for the next one year. So what are the India's plans? Yes, according to Ministry of External Affairs, so he said that. So India will go into strengthen international support for priorities and we are focusing on especially developing countries in diverse social and as well as economic sectors. And some important areas that we are going to focus here is the first one is energy, second one is agriculture, third one is trade, digital economy, health and environment. And even we are having a focus on employment. Yes, we are having a lot of unemployment challenge that is present in India and even tourism. Tourism has been affected because of this COVID-19 and this one here is anti-corruption and women empowerment. So these are some important areas they are going to focus in this next one year. So this article which talks about what are the choices which are present before India. So what are the opportunities which are present before India. So that thing that we are going to discuss now. So first one here is whenever India which holds a presidency for this D20 grouping, yes, it will provide a unique, it will provide a unique branding opportunity. So in this platform, especially we can showcase our recent achievements. For example, how we fought against this COVID-19, how India became the good uh, COVID-19 vaccine supply to other countries. So how we came up with the development of this COVID-19 vaccines, for example, Covishield, Covaxin, etc. And we can also showcase our major achievements in this India's digital revolution. And we can showcase on the progress that we are having in our renewables. Yes, we achieved our target of the solar and we already improved or increased our targets. Okay. 
and if you're talking about climate change so yes we are taking number of steps to address this uh, climate change and even we are focusing on self-reliance of manufacturing and also we are playing an important role in reshaping of this global value change so in all these areas where we are having our achievements yes we can showcase our achievements and this one here is we are also can focus on our new trends of entrepreneurship so not only in this climate change environment digital evolution but even in this business innovation also yes we are moving forward so there were many startups they converted into unicorns and we can also see there is gender progress also that is seen in india so all these achievements we can showcase in this g20 platform and second important opportunity that we have here is yes four democracies for example indonesia india brazil and south africa so they are going to hold presidency from this december 2021 to till november 2025 so those these four democracies indonesia india brazil and south africa so if you see the location here they are present in the southern hemisphere right and if you're talking about indonesia and asia uh, india indonesia and india so they are present in this asia correct and if you are talking about these countries yes with these countries you are having good relationship especially india brazil and south africa they are part of this BRICS. okay so in this way here this it is, it is one of the rare opportunity for synergy and as well as solidarity and we can advance our interest of developing countries as well and the next one here is yes india brazil and south africa they are part of this ipsa correct and they are going to hold this d20 presidencies in the year 2023 2024 and 2025 so in this way here what are the issues that we are having when we want to go through this BRICS? so in this BRICS, the countries were brazil russia india china and south africa so here china which is not accepting so between this india and china the relations are not much good so there are some ties okay there are some uh, low downs or low relations which are going on now between india and china so because of this now this g20 which provides an opportunity for india especially to develop some projects which are not going through this BRICS. and this one here is india will also can advocate inclusive approach with pragmatic that is practical and human centric solutions to global issues for example, we can also focus on this uh, Russia-Ukraine issue. We can also focus on this Africa's marginalization issues. And we can also focus on some permanent observer status of this African Union, etc. Okay, so this is about this topic in detail. And now let us try to see one main question. That is, what are the key areas of reform in this G20 has to survive in the present context, especially keeping in the mind the interest of India? So in the interest of India, what can be the reforms that can come up in this G20? So here I want to give you some homework for you. Here the homework is, let me know what are the objectives behind the formation of G20. So this is second homework students. And now let us try to say next topic. So this topic it is about universal basic income and as well as universal basic insurance. So I think you might be knowing about this universal basic income concept earlier. So I will be giving you some idea regarding this universal basic income and later on we are going to see what is given in this article for sure. So here the for the first time, okay, I can say economic survey of 2015-16 which proposed this universal basic income. So universal basic income, why? Because as you all know, if you see the GDP of India, yes, we have good GDP and India is the fifth largest economy in the world. On another side, we are facing some challenges. So there are millions of people who are below this, uh, below poverty line, that is BPL. And they are facing issues like poverty, hunger, malnutrition, etc. And if you see, there were millions of agricultural laborers uh, and informal workers, thin aids are present. But whenever government is coming up with number of schemes, but they are not utilized by these sections of people. For example, if you are talking about, I will be giving you one example so that you can understand. So what statement I gave now? Here, if you are talking about in Telangana state especially, so here Telangana state government started one scheme called as Raitu Bandhu. So under this Raitu Bandhu, the people who are owning the land, they will be going to get some amount of money. 
So in the same way, Odisha government also came up with this scheme and even central government also came up with this type of scheme on the lines of this scheme which came up in the different states for this agriculture. Okay, that is PM Kisan. So what happened here only the people who are owing this agriculture land, they will be getting money. But what is the situation of these tenants who are working on that land? They are not going to get the money. So in the same way, whenever any schemes are coming up by government, so these people, especially these agriculture laborers and tenants, they are not much benefited. So for these people, yes, we need to ensure the proper, at least basic income, okay, for their proper livelihood, right? So this is some idea regarding this universal basic income. And this article says that not only universal basic income, but we need to focus on this universal basic insurance. So these are the things that are given in this article. And now let us try to see this in detail. So if you are talking about why we need to focus on this social security, especially because of this COVID-19 that entered into our lives in this December 2019, around uh, March, April 2020, yes, there was abrupt imposition of lockdown in our country that happened. So because of this COVID-19, now we understand what is the importance of the social security. Okay. And now there's a debate which is going on regarding this universal basic income. So however, another UBI, that is UBI which stands for this universal basic income, not only this universal basic income, but we can talk about this universal basic insurance now in this present context. So we're talking about the types of safety nets which are present in India. So there are three types of this safety net. So first type here is we are focusing on social assistance programs. Okay, especially for income deprived sections of society. Yes, we are focusing on this social assistance program. We are providing some income. And second one here is scheme that we are coming with a high outlay. And third type of the social security schemes or social security net here is we are focusing on immense resources and institutional capacity. So these are the three types of the social safety nets which are present in our country. So what is the social security? Social security which includes, for example, government is trying to provide food security. Government is trying to provide health security and income security. Okay. As you all know that if you're talking about the population, so recent United Nations Population Prospects report said that India is going to be the most populous country which, are, which we are also going to beat this China by 2030. So as you all know, India is the most populous country in the world. Yes, a lot of amount of people, that is a large number of people, they are below the poverty line. Yes, government of India which is coming up with number of social safety, ne uh, safety nets, especially to ensure to reduce this poverty. So what is the important aim and objective of this universal basic income here is to reduce poverty. And if you're talking about food security schemes in India, yes, government came up with this National Food Security Act under which about 800 millions of beneficiaries, they are providing with the subsidized food grains. Okay, for example, rice, wheat, they are getting it a subsidized food, uh, subsidized rates. And actually this National Food Security Act, which is one of the largest social security scheme in India, and about 120 million children, they are also getting free lunch under this midday meals program. And not only this, even 50 million people, they are benefiting from the free meals program. So they are run individually by particular state governments as well. So this is about the social uh, security regarding this food security that are providing by the government. And if you're focusing on this health sector and income sector, Yes, if you're talking about especially health, recently government came with this Ayushman Bharat scheme, especially for unorganized sector. So I'm not talking about this organized sector here because organized sector, they are having the social security nets. Okay, but it is not the case for this informal workers or unorganized workers. So here uh, for this unorganized sector, government came up with this Ayushman Bharat scheme. And there are about 490 million beneficiaries under this Ayushman Bharat scheme. And if you're talking about this organized sector, yes, government will be running like Employment Safety Insurance Corporation. So what is the salary they are getting? So in that salary, they will be cutting some amount of money and they will be providing the insurance, right? And if you're talking about health insurance schemes, they're also run by particular state governments. 
and it covers about 200 millions of people. Yes, some people they will be covered under this organized sector schemes and some people covered under the state government sector schemes. But here still about 110 million people, they are mainly live aside. Okay, for example, here 110 million people, they were coming up with their own private health incidents. But about 400 million Indians, they are not covered under any kind. They are not covered under this Ayushman Bharat. They are not covered under this central government or state government or private health sector. So in this case here, the incidence in this health is very, very important. And if you are talking about an organized sector, so we have Pradhana Mantri Kisan Mandan Yojana and we have this PM Kisan scheme. So under this here, they are providing some income security for these farmers. But here cost of concern here it is very, very low. And if you are talking about other schemes by the government, we have Atal Pension Yojana. Under this 40 million people, they are getting pension. And we are also having this Pradhan Mantri Shram Yogi Mandan Yojana. Under this also there were 5 million people who are beneficiaries. Okay, and we also have this national pension scheme. And also for un unorganized sector, here government also came up with income uh, security programs. And government also came up with this MG Narega scheme. It is providing like 100 days of guarantee employment for this rural people. And under this also there is increased demand for this MG Narega recently due to this COVID-19 pandemic because of the trend of reverse migration that is from urban areas to rural areas migration. And next one here is thus out of 500 million workers in India about 100 million they have no income security. So because of this yes we can come up with this universal basic income and as well as universal basic insurance. So we are talking about why this universal basic insurance. So it is having two major advantages. So first advantage here is it mainly provides insurance penetration. Okay, insurance penetration. As of now, India it is, it is mainly spending just 4%. But if you are comparing with the other countries like Taiwan, Japan, they are spending like twice or thrice than whatever the India is spending. And next one here is so as economy is largely remains informal in our country, yes, the data regarding this informal uh, workers you are now available in this GST IN network and even eShrimp portal. So by taking this information, we can go for providing insurance easily. Okay, so this is a, some important thing which mainly said and even some states they all came up with this some kind of the social registry portals like uh, Kutumba, for example, in the Karnataka. So we can take the data from that thing. Okay, and as you all know that till our Indian economy which mainly provides some adequate voluntary insurance, so till then social security need to be provided by the government. So this is about the idea of this article. And I hope it is clear. So if you have any doubts, so please comment me in the comment section so that in the next video I will try to address your doubts. So try to make this session more interactive please. So what are the questions I am asking, so please try to give your opinion in the comment box such that I will be feeling like yes my students are following me and whatever the lecture I am giving whatever the risk I am taking since morning 4 o'clock so it will be like motivating me and encouraging me to come up with much more good content okay that will help you for clearing your or clearing your UPSC and even that will help to achieve your goals okay so as a teacher and as a mentor it is my duty right so now let us try to see the next topic so this topic it is about Ekshigana so if you have completed your art and culture, especially students who joined this main science writing course, yes, they're done with art and culture. I think there is no need of explaining about this Ekshagana, right? So this Ekshagana, it is a one of the important Indian theater. So here, this is a one of the important topic from our art and culture point of view. And even in your syllabus, it is clearly mentioned about this theaters, right? So now let us try to see some facts regarding this Ekshagana. So why this Ekshagana is in use? So the all night Ekshagana performance by more than a century old theater, now they want to try to reduce the duration. Okay, now they want to reduce the duration. So because of this, this is in use. And this is the image of performance of this Ekshagana. So one important suggestion from my side here is, whenever you are reading this art and culture, try to keep mobile beside you or mobile or internet or any tablet or your system or laptop and you have to try to type that so and so 
word okay for example if you are reading folk dances you have to type about uh, garba, garba dance or uh, so and so dance and if you are talking about paintings for example madhupani paintings so you have to type that so that you can get the image so if you are seeing that image then what happened it will be helpful for your long term memory so many students they will be asking like so what are the thing i am reading i will be forgetting them so what is a uh, key here what is a tip here is you have to revise them frequently so try to keep your resource less and try to revise them as many times as possible so that that will be helpful for the long term memory so now let us try to see some facts regarding this yakshagana so as you all know this yakshagana it is a traditional theater from the state of karnataka so you have to remember this for sure actually it is a temple art form and this yakshagana which depicts mythological stories and as well as puranas and it is mainly performed by using very very large headgear so in this image you can see they are they are mainly using the large headgears and also they will be having the elaborate facial makeup and vibrant costumes and they will be wearing a lot of ornaments okay and usually recited in this kannada language and also performed in uh, malayalam and as well as tulu language so what are the instruments they are using in this yakshagana for example chenda madalam jagatta changila chakratala so these are some important instruments that are used in this yakshagana so this is about this topic i hope it is clear and now let us move on to some more article which appeared in the other sources title says karnataka expert panel moots accreditation and review of all healthcare programs so if you have gone through your syllabus in your gs paper too so there is some topic regarding your health so health is a one important area right so wherever you are getting any article regarding healthcare so try to make the data from that article so that you can use in your mains So this topic is important from your mains point of view. Here we are going to see about the report of NASCOM. Okay. So recently here NASCOM came up with the report, and the title of that report is Healthcare in India Transforming Through Innovation. Okay. It is Healthcare in India Transforming Through Innovation. So this report especially highlights about how emerging technologies and innovations they are transforming the health. So it is talking about how we are moving forward in this health sector. Yes, if we are talking about Indian health sector, so there is increasing of health expenditure. Yes, we realized because of this COVID nineteen. Yes, what of the health expenditure is very low. So we came up with this realization, and finally we increased our health expenditure massively, from two point seven three lakh crores in two thousand nineteen twenty to now four point seven two lakh crores. so there is increasing of expenditure the first point and we also came up with new missions for example we came up with this e sanjeevani portal right especially we came up with this telemedicine in this covid 19 period for consultations on online and we also came up with this ayushman bharat mission and national digital health mission etc okay and and in india also there is health technological startups they had been increased rapidly so this is about achievements or the status of indian health sector now so what is the driving force behind this growth so yes there is increasing of life expectancy in india okay and because of that there is increasing of percentage of elderly people or senior citizens and in the senior citizens they will be facing with some non communicable disease problems for example hypertension for example you can talk about diabetes etc so for this yes they need proper treatment and there is also increasing of pressure of new diseases for example covid 19 pandemic and now we are facing this monkey pox virus and also recently tomato for tomato flu is also in news so because of this new diseases coming into the picture yes we need to upgrade our technology and next one here is because of increasing of income level yes whenever there is increasing of income level so the people they want to opt for good health services and also there is increasing of health insurance penetration so because of this increase in the health insurance what happen people they will be very much conscious regarding their health right so these are the some driving forces behind the growth so what are the recommendations by this report so this report says that what are the primary health care that is present in india yes we can go for digitalization of that primary health care and we can build good proper infrastructure in our healthcare facilities and we have to upgrade our healthcare force that is healthcare workforce 
And this one here is we can come up with a national health app for all healthcare services because nowadays there is increasing of this digital education and even the technology which had been upgraded and people they will be having this technology in their hands they will be using the mobile phones smartphones etc and now we are going to have our 5g soon so because of this yes we can go for upgradation of our technology for sure so one thing i can say here is so what are the technologies that we are using earlier so if you are not upgrading ourselves then we are not going to get good subscribers we are not going to attract the more people right so our videos can't reach the large number of people right so if we want to attract the more people and if we want to reach the more number of students yes we have to upgrade our technology so in the same way not only this education sector but even in every sector yes we can upgrade our technology and if you are talking about some unique technological innovations okay we got that here is the first one is for example nowadays we are using the smart watches for example apple watch it monitors the health and actually i studied one article in the news itself i think 5 or 6 months ago so in that news what happened whenever in one whenever one person okay one person it is not happened in india but in other countries so he is wearing this apple watch suddenly when he was on riding on his bike so suddenly he got heart attack so at that time what happened this apple watch which monitor the health condition of that so in so person and it sent a message to his lover and also it uh, called ambulance ambulance automatically so in this way your technology will mainly helps especially not only you are having the negative sides but also we have the good positives that we can get from this improvement of technology so first one here is an apple watch which monitors the user's health and even it shares the data with the healthcare providers and it also analyzes the patient's health even before the consultation begins and even you can you, you, i think you might have seen this pulse oximeters so this pulse oximeters they will read our heartbeat and spo2 okay saturated of saturated oxygen levels in our blood right and not only that we are having some electronic equipment that will automatically recognize our bp for example uh, if you open your play store and if you see the bp monitor okay if you see the bp monitor uh, applications you can get number of applications so if you are placing your thumb on that they will be reading your pulse rate and as well as your that will helps you to monitor your bp also okay so in this way artificial intelligence which based wellness that will indicates such as vitals like spo2 and as well as respiratory rate heart rate blood pressure etc so the number of applications that are available in your play store and this one next one here is there is also non invasive glucometers so glucometers are very helpful to identify the blood sugar levels right and even smart health watches chart board systems so they are the recent advancement in this health and next topic here we are going to talk about this moon lighting so i want to introduce this concept of moonlighting okay so this is a one new topic i think so plus uh, this is very important and the most of the students they are also doing some part time work right so they have to know about what is the concept of this moonlighting so what is this vipros rishal prem ji why he said this moonlighting is a cheating in cheating in this it industry so now let us try to understand this topic and this topic is especially important from your economy point of view which comes at the gs paper 3 and you may also get a prelims question like so recently this moon lighting is seen in news so what it is related to so in this way also you can expect a question in your prelims for sure so first of all let us try to see what is the moon lighting so moon lighting is nothing but but it is act of having a second job or working for extra projects or zig or employees that count as a secondary source of income outside one's working hours for example i am working in a software company for example i am a development okay i am a software developer so in this a uh, software developer for example i am working in so and so company for example let us take wipro itself i am working in wipro as a software developer so i am getting a good salary but that salary is not sufficient for me but i have to also think about the another alternate jobs so in this in after coming from the office i will be having like 2 to 3 hours of time in my home So in that two to three uh, hours of time, I can do some freelancing work, right? For example, I can do some extra projects or extra work, right? So for example, this is the one example. And second example here is I am working as a faculty in this Rathore Science. 
so after leaving this office i will be having like two to three hours of time so i can also do some freelancing work or i can take one hour of class in so and so institute in hyderabad so this alternative or second job is called as moonlighting okay what is the moonlighting it refers to act of having a second job or working for extra projects or jigs or employers so it is outside your working hours i'm not talking about in working hours you have to do the second job so in after completing of your working hours and after you're coming outside of your company you are doing some extra projects for your extra income so if we're talking about what are the case studies even swiggy swiggy launched a moonlighting policy in this way it allows the employees to work their passion projects outside their work and one more case study here is wipro says that wipro chairman says that so concept of this moon lightning is a technological industry in this technological industry there is it technology so it is a cheating because for example if i am working in a wipro so i have to follow so and so regulation so and so company so there will be some company secrets i may be knowing so if i am working at another company for a freelancing or for the part time so i may also implement what are the techniques that i learned in this wipro in that company so that will lead to development of that company so because of that here wipro chairman says that this moon lighting is a cheating so now let us try to understand what are the pros and cons so this will be important so pros will be yes i can work outside of this so and so institute and i can work for the side projects and this one is i can gain some extra benefits or extra income so next one here is it is my personal choice to work in this company or if i am having extra time so why can't i work in another company for just part time or freelancing and if i am working if i have a profile of working in three or four companies yes it will be adding adding some extra points for my profile so these are the pros and if you are talking about cons an employee is required to expected to give his entire working time effort and energy for that so and so company where you got the job but not for the other company so this is the first important thing and it is legal but not ethical because yes i am knowing some confidential information of that so and so company i can use that for the favor of another company for my good job profile yes this is unethical and not legal in some states in some states there is restriction of double employment and the factories act but actually there is one loophole here is it is not applicable to it companies so because of that this wipro chairman he said it is cheating because in this factories act it is not included regarding this it companies and more lighting which also turns to day lighting okay some side jobs may take always employees productivity that will leads to decreasing of output in that so and so company where he got job and this one is there might be some fears of leakage of confidential information so these are the pros and cons of this moonlighting so i hope it is clear right so if you have any doubts so please let me know in the comment box and i want to give you one main question that is examine the role of zig economy in the process of empowerment of women in india so try to write answer for this question next one here is discuss the role that national digital health mission can play in changing health market dynamics positively in india so this article it is uh, this question is based on the article that we discussed regarding healthcare so now let us try to see the next topic so this topic about semiconductor chips so what is the meaning of the semiconductor first this thing that you have to know so this article which is also linked to this russia ukraine crisis so semiconductor is nothing but it is not exactly conductor it is not exactly insulator so conductor means it will allows the passing of our electrons but insulator means it will stop the movement the semiconductor means it will mainly balances the flow of this electrons so this semiconductor is very important in this electronic goods electronic products so the title says a chip shortage bites companies cut down the feature to reduce delay so this article is related to the russia and ukraine crisis because so most of the semiconductors that we can get from this russia so because of this russia ukraine crisis that exacerbated that is increased the situation of shut down of the semiconductor chips because of because of crisis or because of the supply of ingredients of palladium and neon so we used to get this palladium and neon from this russia 
but because of this russia ukraine crisis that led to decreasing of exports of this palladium and neon from russia and uh, russia so that that led to decreasing of this manufacturing of semiconductors so we're talking about some facts regarding this palladium so palladium and neon they are important from your prelims point of view so palladium it is a very rare and lustrous and it is like silvery to white color metal and actually this metal which discovered in 1803 and what are the uses uses are it mainly used for the fuel cells it mainly used to clean the toxic gases in the exhaust of the vehicles and even it will be used in the manufacturing of semiconductor in chips it can be also used in jewelry and dental fillings etc so why because of this why this russia ukraine crisis that led to decreasing of this palladium because this russia alone controls about 44 percentage of this palladium global palladium so because of this we have issue and next one here is about neon so we're talking about neon it is a colorless and also it is odorless inert gas and it forms about two thirds of our density of our air so where we can use this neon for example voltage indicators for example gears making of chips lightning arresters and driving equipment in refrigerators and in some areas we can use this neon so here this neon which is under control of uh, ukraine okay ukraine supplies 70 percentage of this neon supplies okay so this is the definition of semiconductor you can go to that and now let us try to say next topic so this topic is regarding new species okay new species of gecko which mainly found in august malai and this topic is important from your environment and ecology which comes under your gs paper 3 and now let us try to see the context so a group of researchers they recently discovered this new species of bent toed gecko that too in agastya malai hills in western ghats so here you have to focus on where this agastya malai hills is located and we are talking about some facts regarding geckos geckos are reptiles they are different from lizards okay so they found in all continents except in antarctica so in antarctica we don't found them but almost in all continents we can see these geckos and they are colorful lizards and they adopted to habitats in the rainforest deserts and cold to mountain cold mountain slopes also they can see but the most of the geckos are nocturnal that means they will be active in the night period so they will be go for searching of their food in the night and geckos depends upon the fruits, uh, flower nectars, and as well as insects. So, if we're talking about species of gecko, yes, in India we can see two species of gecko. First one is Indian golden gecko, and they are listed in the Schedule One of uh, our Wildlife Protection Act. Okay, and they are uh, listed as least concern in our IUCN Red List. And this one is Tokay gecko. Tokay gecko, which may be listed in this Schedule Four of Wildlife Protection Act, and they are also least concern. And this is a newly identified species of gecko. So where is this Agastya Malai is located? Agastya Malai is located here, right? And now let us try to see the prelims practice question. The first question is regarding the sex ratio. So yesterday we discussed about the article regarding sex ratio, right? So there is a question here. So it is the number of females born per 100 males. Second one is the child sex ratio is defined as the number of uh, child per 1000 males at the age group of 0 to 6 years. So here sex ratio it is not for 100 males, it is for 1000 males. So correct option here is B2 only. And let us try to focus on this vocabulary. So first word here is coercive. So coercive means relating to or using force or threats. Next one is steering means the mechanism that is present in the vehicle or vessel or aircraft that will helps to move in the different direction. And advocate means publicly recommending or supporting. So I want to make a small announcement. We in Rathod Science, we came up with this prelims test series. Okay, and as well as foundational course. And the main answer course it is going to be started. The new batch is going to be started because there is high demand from the students. Because they understand what is the importance of this main answer writing after, after attending some webinars. Okay, so try to join this main answer writing course or prelims test series and as well as foundational course. And if you want to take the individual course, you can also take the individual course. For example, only geography, history, economy uh environment etc so try to join those courses and if you have want to visit those courses or if you want to see the demo videos you can visit our website rathosisacademy.com and if you have any doubts so please call me on this number 8074765513 and this is also whatsapp number you can also text me there 
So now let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF. Right. So this is our today's Hindu. So in the first page there is nothing much important. The first article regarding the CBI searches. CBI searches residences of RGD leaders. So here you have to focus on the CBI. You have to focus on basic facts regarding the CBI. So where can you get these basic facts? You have to open your Lakshmi Kant book and you have to see this chapter of CBI. Okay, this is your homework. And this one here is quote to hear, hear this review, P, review plea of this PMLA that is the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. So already we discussed this topic. So once the review is done based on the judgment, again we are going to get articles. So there we are going to discuss our topic. And if you move forward here, you can see property tax rates are high likely to go up in the city. So here you have to know about right to pro right to property. So whether this right to property is a fundamental right or not. So in which art which article in the present constitution which talks about this right to property. So let me know in the comment box. And if you move forward in the state space, there is nothing much important. Here you can see no child in Maharashtra died of malnutrition. So here you have to know about the child deaths because of this malnutrition and you have to know what is the impact of this malnutrition. So what are the indicators of the malnutrition and recent data of this National Family Health Survey 5 also. And if you move forward in this page number 5, there is nothing much important. I did I discussed about this Ekshagana. And in this editorial session, I discussed about this D20 article. I discussed about this universal basic insurance. I discussed about this topic regarding this linking of Aadhaar card with voter ID. Okay, and here in this data point, you can see this article. So this is about intellectual property. So this will be very important because especially if you are from medical background. So you might be knowing about yes, patented drugs, your cost, uh, their cost is very, very high and it is not accessible for every person. Okay, but if you are, if you are a doctor, this yes, you want to may, you want to make that drug which is available for the patients who are suffering from that uh, so and so disease. So in that condition, what are the choices that are especially present before you as a doctor, you have to think about this and it is a case study and it is also an interview question. And if you move on to textual context, there is one article regarding this competition amendment bill 2022. You have to go through that once. And I also discussed about this tomato flea in our day before yesterday's lecture. You have to revise that topic once. And in this 10th page here, you can see Bilkas Bano case, uh, Supreme Court, it is going to hear the petition. Okay, so once the decision which is given, then we are going to discuss this topic once again. And here you can see idle wings submit uh, papers to bring back the six Chola era idols. So one important uh, question that I found in the art and culture here regarding this Chola period was Natraja idol. So in this Natraja idol, it is having how many hands? So this is one important prelims question. So in this way, you can get a question from this Chola era idol. So please focus on this. And if you move forward here, you can see regional language important in early education or early learning. So here you have to know about uh, this national education policy 2020 and what it is focusing on this regional language. And here you can see central teams in Chhattisgarh to probe MG Narega works. You have to focus on this MG Narega. So already I think two days ago or three days ago, I discussed about this MG Narega article. And it says that yes, we have to increase the women centric jobs. Okay, women centric works in this MG Narega. And this one is wind projects addiction to be peaked by 2024. Here we have to focus on our renewable energy targets. And what are the targets that we achieved till now? And if you move forward in this world page, I didn't find anything important. And in this business page, there are two articles important that is GST kitty for top states could rise 20 percentage in this financial year 2023, says Crystal. You have to go through this article. And if time permits, in tomorrow's lecture, we are going to see some articles that I left to read. And next one here is India set to plan SOP, standard operating procedures for rupee use in Russia trade. So this article is also very important. And these are some important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. So if you have not subscribed to this Rathors IS yet, so subscribe to our channel Rathors IS Academy and hit the bell icon so that you will be getting get, uh, regular notifications whenever we are uploading video. And we are also trying to make shots. So try to watch that shots also. So that will be also very informative. And visit our website for enrolling into the courses. So by this I'm concluding, thank you so much and have a nice day. Jai Hind.